In this video, I'm going to discuss the maximum material condition concept. I'm going to totally skip the least material condition concept wherever possible and just focus on MMC. So you'll see it three different ways written. You might see it fully written out, maximum material condition. You might see it as an abbreviation. MMC, or you might see it as a symbol. It depends where it is on the drawing. If it's in the feature control frame, it's going to be a symbol. If it's in a drawing note, it could be either written out or as an abbreviation. And then when we're talking about things, we typically will write the abbreviation and not the symbol. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So it's used in three different places, as I've kind of discussed. The first is when we're talking about limits of size. So when we use uh, limits of size, our limits, you know, we're going to have an upper limit and a lower limit. One of them will be the MMC and one of them will be the LMC. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have a little cylinder like a pen. Diameter one plus or minus 20 thousandths. The maximum material condition for this pen is going to be 1.02. The maximum material condition is when this feature has the most material that it's allowed within its size limits. I could write this uh, dimension and tolerance like this if I wanted to. Maybe it makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, so that's going to be what we would call our MMC for this size, for this dimension and tolerance. Our LMC is the opposite. It's going to be uh, when the feature has the least material. Another way to think of it is which side makes it heavier, right? Which, you know, uh, limit of size uh, tends to make the part have more mass and be heavier. I won't show it on the board, but when we're doing a hole, like an internal feature, it flips. The MMC is the smallest size allowed, unlike here, where it's going to be the largest size. Here's a very common use case for the abbreviation, right? Maybe we're making some notes, trying to figure, uh, you know, do some hand calculations or something. I might uh, put, hey, that's the MMC and that's the LMC. Instead of writing it out, I could use the symbol. I'd say that's probably, a, typically we'll save the symbol for being used in the feature control frame. So that's the concept. I'm not going to go into rule number one in this video, but at maximum material condition and any regular feature of size, you have to have perfect form in the ASME system. In ISO, you don't. Uh, and that's a big difference between the two symbols, but I'll save that for a, another video here. What's the next use case? Let's take a look. Okay, check it out. We're going to be looking at a straightness tolerance. Now, this is something you don't see all, that, see all that often in the wild, but it's helpful for this discussion because it's basically the simplest case we can go to. Now, what this is controlling is the derived median line of this feature. Don't worry about it, really. All we're trying to say is the middle, right? The middle of this feature needs to be within a cylinder that is this size, right? What it lets us do is control the form separately from the size. In the ASME system, the size is the form unless you do something to release that. So without this, the total straightness uh, is 0 0.04. It's the total size tolerance. So we've got plus or minus 0 0.02. The total form is 0 0.04. It could be straightness, cylindrist, any form variation, right? It's not something we normally measure and report. Now, maybe that's not what we want, right? Uh, we could have a situation where a part has to have a very small diameter tolerance, but can for whatever reason have a large form tolerance. Or the opposite situation, it could have a very uh, large diameter variation and it has to be, you know, very, very straight. So this just gives us flexibility. Now, without 
any other information here, this is going to apply at what's known as regardless of feature size. Regardless of feature size does not have a symbol, right? It used to have a symbol. It used to be an S with a circle around it. So if you're dealing with older drawings, you may see that occasionally. Now it's the default for uh, geometric controls dealing, controlling a feature of size. So uh, position, orientation sometimes, and form tolerances sometimes, straightness, straightness and flatness specifically. Now, what does that mean? It, if you ever taken my class, you know I'm going to say this. It means what you think it means, right? You have 20 thousandths of tolerance no matter what size the feature is. So up here, if our diameter if our diameter is 1.02, our geometric tolerance is 0.02. Our diameter is uh, 1.00, our geometric tolerance is 0.02. It doesn't change, right? It doesn't change at all. So another thing we get here is a variable boundary. So what I mean is if we come in at 1.02 and our geometric tolerance is 0.02, the total amount of room that this pin can take up is a combination of both of these. It's 1.04, and let me draw you what I mean. Right. So say the pin at every little spot we measure it is at MMC, but now we've got this tolerance in the middle that allows it to bend up to this number. Okay, So this, this number right here is what we're measuring over here, our boundary. And this is going to be known as a resultant condition in GD&T, but don't worry about it. Just call it, we'll call it the boundary for now. This boundary changes depending on the size of the actual produced pin. So if the pin comes in 1.0, our boundary is 1.02. So all that means is we can't use a fixed gauge to measure this. It has to be a variable gauge. For a super simple part like this, that's possible. I mean, I don't, I don't really, off the top of my head, I don't know if that's uh, something people are doing, but it's possible, right? It's not unreasonable. Now. Back to our MMC symbol discussion. So we're going to add the MMC symbol to the feature control frame. Okay, It's in the same box or compartment as the tolerance. That means, and this is how I would recommend you read it, this value applies only at the MMC size of the actual feature. Only. Okay. That implies that there's some other value at sizes other than the MMC. So let's draw this up here. The, the, the geometric tolerance that we start with doesn't change. Right? We have this concept of bonus tolerance or additional tolerance. We get zero bonus tolerance because we know that this 20,000 applies at the MMC size. But if we come in at some size other than the MMC size, then we get bonus tolerance equal to the difference. So the difference, uh, the amount of bonus tolerance is equal to the difference between the MMC size and the actual size. So in this case, 1.02 minus 1.00 is going to give us 0 0.02. Now we just keep going down, right? We have a total bonus tolerance capability of 40 thousandths. That is equal to our total size tolerance, right? They're, they're related. Now, this gives us a total tolerance of 0.06, right? If the feature comes in at its LMC, its smallest diameter. Uh, so the, the tolerance changes depending on the actual size of the feature. One other effect this has is that if we add the actual size to the total geometric tolerance, we're going to get a single number. And that's going to be known as our virtual condition. 
You may have heard that term before, just a fixed boundary, okay? And that's the size of the gauge we could use to verify this geometric tolerance. Uh, the other thing we need to verify is that the, the part isn't, the LMC is within limits, uh, but essentially you can, you can optimize uh, this way. Uh, this isn't for everything, I'm just trying to show you how the MMC symbol works. Now, let's look at the other use case of the MMC symbol, which is maximum material boundary, okay? It depends where it's used. Okay, so the other place you're gonna see this symbol. We talked about this when it applies to the tolerance. It's gonna to be called maximum material condition. We discussed a little bit about what it does. It does something very different here if it's with a datum reference. It's gonna be called maximum material boundary. This is relatively new. Uh, this was introduced in the 2009 uh, ASME Y145 standard. Before that, they were both called the same thing. So it's a little confusing. And, AS, and uh, the 1984 standard, both were MMC, but they gave them different names because they do totally different things. Now, what does this do? It doesn't, let me start at what it doesn't do. It doesn't force you to inspect it with hard gauges. And that's something I've heard a good bit, that if you see this symbol, it means you must inspect with a hard gauge. You must have expensive, you know, custom stuff to check the part. That isn't true. It's also not true that you must use a coordinate measuring machine that can do all the calculations for you. It's preferable to do it that way, but you don't have to. Uh, what it really means is that we can set that datum feature at a fixed size for inspection. So the default requirement for a datum feature let me let me make this clear too. The datum feature needs to be a feature of size. Okay, so in this case we've got a diameter. So it's typically gonna be a diameter or something, but it's gotta be a feature of size, not a, a plane. Okay, that, that wouldn't work. If the datum reference is a feature of size, regardless of material boundary, applies by default. And that's actually a tougher thing to deal with at inspection, because the requirement is that you have a, uh, in this case, a collapsing cylinder, you know, that makes full contact with that feature. So think about grabbing this in a, uh, a lathe chuck, right? You've got, or a collet, all the jaws coming in at once, and then the, the collet or the chuck is the axis that you're gonna measure everything else from, okay? And that's the default requirement. That can be difficult to do. Uh, and, you know, it's not exactly straightforward uh, to do that. The MMC symbol, which means max material boundary in this case, means that we can set our datum feature at a fixed size for inspection, right? In this case, we could have a hard gauge that checks the whole thing. But what is the size? We're gonna set it for the maximum material condition or the virtual condition of the feature. It depends which datum reference it is. In this case, it's gotta be the maximum material condition because there is no virtual, the virtual condition and the maximum material condition are the same, right? So the MMC of this feature is a diameter of 2.02. .02. We'd set a gauge to that. We'd set another gauge, the virtual condition of this. Uh, when I say gauge, I mean there'd be basically uh, a round cylinder with a, a pin, and we drop this part in there, and if it fits, we're good. We just gotta make sure the donut isn't too small and we're all set to go. Now, if you can't do that, it's not the end of the world. You could still inspect it the way we were talking about before, where you grab it with a, a collapsing, a variable thing, measure from the axis of that. It's just that you might reject a good part every once in a while, because there is additional tolerance. Wait, I shouldn't say tolerance. There is uh, something called datum shift 
you get with this. So essentially the part, say this thing came in at a diameter of 1.00 and your gauge is set to 1.02, it can wiggle around in there, right? That's extra, and I don't want to use the word tolerance, but it kind of is extra tolerance, right? It gives you more wiggle room with making the part. Whereas when you grab it in a, a chuck, a collapsing thing, it can't go anywhere, right? This hole is where it is. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? It doesn't force you to inspect it one way or the other, but you might reject a good part every once in a while. With a coordinate measuring machine, it doesn't matter as much. You can program it to take in the, the, the data and spit out what you need. Uh, so that's it. That's the three use cases, right? There's the one when we're talking about stuff, right? So up here, our MMC is 2.02, just talking about limits of size. There's MMC associated with the geometric tolerance, and there's an MMC associated with the datum reference, which is called maximum material boundary. Uh, in this video, I didn't talk about least material condition. All the same stuff applies. It's just an L with a circle around it. it doesn't get used as much. Uh, and I have other videos about that if you ever, you ever want to look it up. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think.